Hey cats, what's happening? I just got back from the nursery. Got my garden plants. So I've got uh, some sugar snap peas here, some eggplant back here, some jalapeno peppers. Believe it or not, there's 13 tomato plants right here. Uh, and that'll fill up most of the garden. Uh, yellow squash. This is uh, basil. And I also have somewhere in here, oh yeah, a uh, zucchini. So <laughs> as small of a batch of plants as that is, that'll fill up the entire garden. Now, I haven't tilled yet. Uh, it, you know, it, a couple days ago it had poured down rain. Everything was a soggy mess. In fact, we mowed and we couldn't even mow everything because some of the yard's been a swamp. I might try to finish that up today, the mowing, but I'm going to let, it, it's not supposed to rain for the next two more days too, so the garden should dry up pretty good and I'll be able to get it tilled in. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with my new LED headlight that I installed the other day from expected.com and uh, seems to be working pretty well. But given that, I was remembering some of the times when you know, I rode with that old halogen headlight and uh, some situations that I got into in the dark that <laughs> weren't that great. The first one that comes to mind was actually when I was in Sturgis. And if you've ever been to Sturgis, one of the things I always recommend is going on the uh, Custer State Park Wildlife Loop. So I decided I was going to ride the old hog down to Custer State Park and take the Wildlife Loop, which the loop itself is like 30 miles. So, and you know, you're going to take your time. So it's going to take at least an hour to do that 30 miles. It's like a 25 mile an hour speed limit or something. And then you're going to stop along the way because they've got, uh, the wild burrows there and if you think ahead of time you can buy a package of carrots and you can feed the burrows carrots they love to eat carrots uh, and then if as you continue on you'll come into the prairies where there's free-range buffalo and or bison and they actually will herd right across the street <laughs> and uh, yeah that's kind of a <laughs> thrilling adventure I would say to ride uh, through a herd of bison but anyway, I did that. I went around the wildlife loop and finished that up. And of course, by then you're you're somewhere in the mid afternoon, whatever, maybe late afternoon. Uh, and I thought, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I got to head back up to Sturgis, so I am I'm going to go take the Needles Highway before I go back. I'm going to ride the Needles. So I made my way over to the Needles and I started down uh, through the twisties and everything that goes up through the needles and that's not a short road either and uh, it's got a very low speed limit well it started to get pretty late evening and uh, about the time that I got up to the needles uh, the sun was pretty much going down there wasn't any other bikes around I was like the only bike up there everybody else had done their thing during the day and they were gone so I decided, uh, yeah, I better get going. And I continued riding the rest of the way out of the needles there. And it got dark. It got real dark. And uh, that made it even worse with all those twists and turns and, and who knows what kind of animals were popping out on the side of the road on me. So, uh, But I made it back to, the, to like the, the, the main road. And I still had to figure out how I was going to get all the way back up to the Buffalo Chip in Sturgis. So I jumped on, I thought, well, I'll, I'll jump on the expressway, but I still had, you know, like 30 miles to go to get to the expressway. So I got to the expressway, and lucky for me, there was a one percenter that was heading the same way. It looked like he had a, had maybe his daughter on the back. It looked like a young young girl on the back. And he started hammering down, and I kind of kept pace with him. And I think we probably never went below 90 miles an hour and 
pushed 100 miles an hour a couple times all the way back up to Sturgis and uh, he peeled off before we got to Sturgis but uh, I made it back to the Buffalo Chip just in time for the uh, Steppenwolf concert that I didn't want to miss so uh, that was one experience I had of riding in the dark that was a little shaky you know I don't like riding after dark um, yeah, when you get older, your your reflexes aren't as quick, your eyesight's not as good, so yeah, better off if I don't have to ride at night, I don't think I will. And of course now, uh, another scary situation I had riding after dark, I was on the expressway going through Des Moines, Iowa, and that's when I wrecked my bike. Uh, it was probably around midnight, and I was uh, heading east out of Des Moines, Iowa on the expressway there when another car merged up onto the highway and merged right into me and forced me right off the road and down over through a ravine I went and was lucky to have survived that. That was one heck of a dark night for me and I wouldn't want to repeat that one again. I used to always hang out at the, the biker bar years ago. I mean, that was my home away from home. I spent a lot of time at the biker bar. And I usually stay there until very late nighttime, sometimes even wee hours in the morning. Now, I didn't always drink there. Uh, I, I, I was drinking a lot of water at that time. I had pretty much got away from the booze and, uh, and was just drinking water, but I still hung around up there with, with all the uh, other bikers. So it was, I wouldn't say it was common, I would say it was pretty much routine that when I rode home, it was dark. And I took the back roads to get home regardless because there wasn't any traffic on those back roads. You just had to watch out for deer and stuff like that. It was not an uncommon thing for the sheriff to stop me on the back roads though. Uh, watching people that left the bar and he'd follow me and see me turn off on the back roads and he'd come up behind me and pull me over and you know, how much you had to drink son and well I had a couple <clears throat> bottles of water and he looked at me all confused water uh, you just came from the bar yeah yeah and I just had a couple of bottles of water while I was there something wrong with that uh, no sir nothing wrong with that uh, have a good day and, and off I would go Harassment. Eh, well, he was just looking for somebody to give a ticket to, I guess, and that was like a sitting duck, I guess, watching people come out of the bar. <laughs> anyway, he didn't score with me, never did, and uh, I made it home okay. But one night I was riding home from the bar, and it was real foggy, and it was after dark. And there were some twisties in some of the back roads that I took, and I was, I was coming around this one corner, and I wasn't going real fast because of the fog, you know. But right in the middle of the road, here was this big old mama raccoon with three little babies, and they were like right in the path of where I was going. Well, I thought for sure I was going to whack them. And I hit the brakes, but I couldn't stop. I, I, I was going too fast to come to a complete stop. I mean, they just came out of the fog so quick, and it was like, whoa. Somehow I miraculously went right through them. I looked behind me and all three of them were waddling off. All three of the babies were waddling off the road and Mama was, was waddling off there with them. I never hit any of them. Thank goodness. Anyway, again, another reason why I don't like riding after dark. Probably one of the most frightening times I had on the bike after dark. A buddy of mine were riding and we uh, were on our way home and we were on the expressway and it got dark pretty quick on us it was a summer evening and uh, we were rolling along a pretty good speed well all of a sudden we came across you know like a, like a road construction and though the workers like to work at night because it's cooler at night so they had it funneled down into one lane and there wasn't, it wasn't a lot of traffic, but they had it funneled down to one lane and it was, the lane kind of like dropped where they had ground the pavement out and it was real squirrely ride and you were like all over the place. It, it was just like riding through a mess of potholes and we had to slow way down 
and you know barrels everywhere flashing lights everywhere and uh, worried about other traffic <laughs> coming up on you I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously we, we didn't want to go hauling speed through there uh, but uh, I was, you know, and that went on for miles, and I was just like, oh, Lord, please let this end, you know, nothing worse than road construction when you're on a motorcycle, and especially when they have just ground the asphalt out of there, and the road is like all pot, potholed up and ground up, and, you know, the dust was everywhere. I couldn't wait to get out of that situation, and I, I just, just felt real uneasy. Because I, you know, after dark, you, again, you have trouble seeing for one, but then being in a situation where it's not the easiest place to ride either just makes the problem worse. So anyway, it's, you know, no wonder that I don't like to ride after dark, given those situations. I wouldn't want to repeat any of those again and don't intend to. So <laughs> better for me just to stay riding during the daytime. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. Click on that little thumbs up button and give me a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you as uh, one of our viewers on a regular basis. Thanks for watching, you guys, and uh, I'll see you around next time. Till then, ride hard and die free.